hi everyone my name is marceline welcome to another episode on how we roast cook in today's episode i am going to be showing you my version of the jamaican meatloaf so if you're new to my page welcome i'm happy to have you and for those who have been here with me i appreciate you guys so much in this bowl i have two cups of whole milk i add a tablespoon of sugar and i do use coconut milk sometimes so it all depended on what you have and what you want to use next i add two packets of active dry yeast and the sugar is going to help the yeast to activate so the next thing i'm going to do is cover it and set it aside next i'm going to move on to combining my dry ingredients i have six and a half cups of bread flour i'm going to add half cup of sugar and I'm also going to add a tablespoon of salt. I'm going to combine that and by now my yeast has activated and I'm going to add that as well. I went ahead and I cracked my egg and removed the eye and then I'm going to add that in the mixture. After adding the egg, I'm going to go ahead and add a stick of butter. I'm just going to dump everything in there all at once and then I'm going to turn my mixer on low and as soon as it starts to combine then i speed it up to medium one thing that i forgot to mention is whenever you're making anything with yeast you have to make sure that everything is at room temperature and or warm so for instance the milk make sure that your milk is warm make sure that your egg is at room temperature make sure that your butter is at room temperature as well because the yeast does not like cold stuff and it does not like hot stuff so it has to be warm or room temperature so know that my mixture is fully combined it is soft and sticky and that's exactly what you want because you want your dough you want your bread to come out soft and nice all right so you're going to need some oil to grease your pan and you're going to add your mixture in there and then you're going to let that sit cover it properly let it sit for at least one hour you need this to be in a warm place or even a dark place if you can so maybe put it in your cupboard or in your oven or microwave all right so while that is rising we're gonna go ahead and prepare our ground beef i'm using a 93 percent lean and seven percent fat that way it's not too greasy all right so i'm adding some onions kelly and scotch bonnet pepper the beef should be a little bit spicy not overly spicy so i use one and a half scotch bonnet pepper and i'm adding some thyme i'm adding some fresh thyme and i'm going to add some dry thyme as well i forgot the garlic but i did had to went ahead and chop up some garlic and add in there as well you need some garlic in there to give it some flavor if you don't like the fresh garlic you can use some garlic powder all right, so now I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to the pan and make sure that it's properly heated and add my ground beef. I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to add all my chopped seasonings and I'm gonna add some powdered seasonings as well. I love when I can taste the flavors in my ground beef, so I'm adding some extra thyme. I'm also going to add some Creole Cajun seasoning and I'm going to add some beef seasoning as well. And as I always tell you guys, whenever you're cooking, if you don't have the exact seasonings that I am using, nevertheless, go ahead and use whatever seasoning that you normally use when you're cooking. All right. You, there's no need to go out to get the exact one that I'm using because as long as you've been using your seasoning and you know what it tastes like and it's not too salty, go ahead and add it. So now you're going to need some breadcrumb. You can either grate it or blend it up the reason why i'm blending it is because i do have some seasoning that i'm rinsing out from my bowl and i'm gonna go ahead and just break up my bread i use three breadcrumbs for this and i'm gonna blend it and add it so what the breadcrumb does it keeps the beef very moist and it also absorbs the flavors so when your meatloaf is baked you would realize how much moisture is still in the ground beef it's not dried out because of the breadcrumbs so don't skip that step either grate it or blend it either way it's perfect now i'm just taking the flavors up a notch by adding some meat sauce and i also added some browning to give the beef some color the beef is already cooked it's perfectly flavored it smells good the kitchen smells amazing right now and you can still see how moist this looks so now i'm going to turn the stove off i'm going to pour this into 
a bowl and allow it to cool down while I move on to my pastry. It's approximately 75 minutes since I knead my dough and it has doubled in size. I'm going to remove it from the container. As you can see, I'm going to go ahead and punch it to release the air. And then we're going to give it a little knead, about three minutes knead. And then we're going to move on to the process of making our meatloaf. I don't have a board for dough, so I normally use my counter. It's clean and I'm making sure that it's dried properly. I'm going to go ahead and give my dough a knead. And the only time I'm going to add flour is when it's time for me to do the rolling out process. I'm going to lightly sprinkle flour and I'm going to cut up my dough in small pieces. And I emphasize when I say lightly on the flour because I don't want the texture of my dough to change too much. I want it to remain soft and nice. And as you can see, I section them in small pieces. They don't have to be the same size because unless you're a perfectionist and you want to go ahead and measure on the scale and all that. But I just normally just eyeball it. I cut them up in about the size of my fist and then I roll them out in a circle, add my ground beef and then I'm going to fold it. After folding it over in a semicircle, I use my pastry cutter to cut it and when you use a pastry cutter, it seals it while it's cutting it and it leaves it with that authentic pastry cut edges. For the next one, I'm going to add cheese for the cheese lovers. So it's all up to you if you want to make it plain with just beef or you can add cheese. So if you don't have the pastry cutter, after adding your beef and adding your cheese, you're just going to go ahead and fold it over and use a fork. So you just use the teeth of the fork to seal the edges. All right, so you have seen me made the one with the beef. I made one with cheese. My husband don't eat beef, so I made one for him with just plain cheese or you can add vegetables if you don't eat meat so what i did is cover them for an extra 20 minutes and then i remove the cover i'm greasing them with some melted butter and i'm gonna pop them in the oven i already have my oven preheated at 300 i don't want them to burn so i'm not gonna put the oven any higher than 300 all right so just be patient and you will have some lovely meatloaf they usually take from 20 to 25 minutes when you put it on 300 if you bake it at 350 it will take like 15 to 20 minutes but sometimes when i bake it at 350 i realize that the bottom browns too quickly and i don't like that i want everything to have a perfect color this one is just plain cheese. I was trying to break it to show you the meat, but this one is just plain cheese. By the way, if you haven't seen my cheese bread video, you can check that out as well. I'm just going to cut into this to show you how juicy and how cheesy it is. The meat isn't dried out as I told you before and it is just perfect and just delicious your family is going to enjoy this so go ahead get all your ingredients together and bake all right thank you so much for watching i really appreciate every single one of you for taking the time out of your day thank you so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed the video and i look forward to seeing you in the next one bye